And ladies, you did such an excellent, excellent, excellent job. Mm. Amen. And so we have the Forsen family here. Welcome, everyone. Hello, I'm over here. Hi. Hi. You must be looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who do we have here, Pastor? Maybe they can introduce themselves. All right, we'll start. Well, I'll help Ruthie out. This okay. is Ruth Fortson. Say hi, Ruth. Okay. And this is? Joshua. Joshua. This is? Abraham Fortson. All right, right. Abraham Fortson. And your name? Hugh Fortson the third. Okay. Right. And, and we have, excuse me, here. Katora Fortson. And okay. we have Candina Fortson. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's such a beautiful family. And you know, it just excites me because you have a story to tell about Jonestown. Yes. And you lost your first wife and your son. Yes, in that that's tragedy. Correct. So um, I would really like to share that with the audience. And I just wanted everyone to see this beautiful family here. And ladies, you did such an excellent job. So ladies and gentlemen, next we will have Jonestown. As promised, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about Jonestown. Mm -hmm. Amen. Maybe why don't you just take it, Pastor, and just take us there. All right. Um, because of my lack of knowledge of the Word of God, amen, back in the late 70s, mm -hmm. I had followed a man in what was his vision. His vision was to lead people to freedom, so he said. Mm -hmm. Little did we know that there was an alternative, alternative motive uh -huh. to what he was doing, okay. and he wanted to become the greatest socialistic uh, uh, person in the world. Mm -hmm. He was taking a little bit from every communistic, socialistic organization to make himself an mm -hmm. ultimate plan. How many years ago was that? That was 20, almost 23 years ago. Okay. And History. Yes. And yes. what he did, he began to make people think that he had such clout and in and, and one sense that he was almost God mm -hmm. and that he could lead people into where they should be. Okay. And many of us left family members here and we went to follow this man to a place what he called the promised land which turned out to be a place that was turned into Jonestown mm -hmm. a town in the remote jungles of Guyana South America away from all kinds of civilization and in order to get in fly in by a small aircraft mm -hmm. and then ride on a bumpy uh, road for a good two or three hours yeah. just to get into how there. many people are we talking about here about a good Talks actually 1200 people were wow. there yeah, and, Jeez. and we talk about people from every walks of life, uh, yes. educational, you name it, uh, every kind of church was there, mm -hmm. but people were searching. They were hurting people that were searching. So would you say most of the people there were saved or weren't saved? I would say they were not saved. They may have been in churches, but mm -hmm. not saved, not mm -hmm. really knowing who God was or knowing really who they were in mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. And in that, they followed this man's dream. Mm -hmm. But the sad part, that once we got into Jonestown, the first thing they did, they took away, if you had a Bible with you, they took away your Bible. That was confiscated. Mm -hmm. Wow. Your driver's license, all your ID, everything was confiscated. Now, but he was a pastor, suppo so, so supposedly. To supposedly. Well, see, mm -hmm. he said that religion was the opium of the people, so by any means necessary, I would use that to draw people in, mm -hmm. and then once I got them in, then I'd teach them how to be socialists. Mm -hmm. He said because Jesus was a socialist, mm -hmm. didn't he change things? Mm -hmm. That's all it means. Yeah, and he was a pastor here in the States. Right. California? California, uh, uh, Los, Los Angeles, Angeles area. San Francisco, Bakersfield, Fresno, okay. all of those places he represented, Redwood Valley, he okay. represented. Okay, okay. But see, he came under the cloak of religion. Yes. And then he wooed people in. Then when Amen. he got what he wanted, then he, when you got over there, he let you know that, hey, no holes barred. I'm in charge here. And I'm you the ultimate. Leave. If no, you, you couldn't leave. You could make a request to leave, and you would be literally embarrassed in what they call the town hall meetings. Wow. And he would make you feel guilty. Mm -hmm. Why would you want to leave? After I went to court, I spent money. I sent our attorneys to, to fight for you in court, mm -hmm. or your son or daughter. I got them out of jail, and I'm giving them a nice place to live. So he did stuff like that, getting people out of jail. He had yes, that kind of power. Oh, yeah. He had that power. Wow. He had about three attorneys that were full-fledged attorneys, mm -hmm. and they would send them, because matter of fact, I used to do uh, paralegal work for them. Mm -hmm. Not paid, mind you, but okay. they would send down information. I would get the information for yeah. them. Then when they came down on a such given day, yeah. they would go right 
to court and get the people out because it looked like such a good project. It looked like such a good church that it was helping people. Getting out judges of jail would, yeah, and all kinds of Judges stuff. would say, sure, we'll let you go to the project. There are many people wow. that went down there with us ah. because the judge figured, well, there won't be a problem here, here so they let them go. They sent to Yeah. Wow, demonic. And in really? that, it was deception. 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 Yeah. That's the greatest trick that the enemy has with, with mm -hmm. us even today. Yes. Deceiving the people of God that mm -hmm. they aren't who they think mm -hmm. they are in That's God. That's one of the things I want you to pray for people mm -hmm. for deliverance as you at the end of this. But go continue, please. And in that, after um, Jones's, you know, everything done in darkness will come to light. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And his darkness began to come to light in mm -hmm. that there were people that had doubted him and had questioned him. They had finally got together and compared notes and began to say, well, this is not really the man that we thought he was in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And in that, a group was formed called the Concerned Relatives, mm -hmm. as well as uh, the late Congressman Leo Ryan had gotten involved with this investigation. Wow. And then Channel 4, they all began to merge at the same time, said, well, we're going down there and see really what Jonestown is right. all about. Right. Because most of the relatives here were getting the form letters. Well, we're doing fine. We love Jonestown. Uh, we'll be glad when you get here. Ah, that's it. so because they see, were writing letters in their own handwriting? Well, the people? yes, because yes. see, they had a letter writing committee. Ah. And if you didn't send a letter, then you would be brought up on the floor. Then you were made to go to this committee at least once a week. And if you didn't know what to write, they would write it for you, and then you would copy it in your own language, or your own handwriting, actually. Yeah. And it would be mailed back in bulk mail to these different individuals to make sure that you kept some kind of contact with them. Wow. But yet and still, it really wasn't what you wanted to say. Right. So how long did this Jonestown actually exist? About a good three and a half years. Wow. Actually, when, when it first started, when the, a group of about 15, 20 went down mm -hmm. and actually went into the neck, naked jungle, jungle, if you will, mm -hmm. and with Amer Indians, they were paying them, mm -hmm. and they took machetes and began to cut down trees and started to clear land to make room for a bulldozer to come wow. in and literally start pushing stuff down. Mm. Was he married or children? Did yeah, he, have he any had a, a, a wife, uh, his wife, Marcelin, uh, he always bragged of 22, 23 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, he had a one natural born son, Stephen Jones, and then he adopted children. He adopted oh, okay. a, a young man, a young black man, a baby at the time, and he named him Jim Jones Jr. Mm. Uh, from that, he also, a Korean, Japanese, uh, a Caucasian, he just had a, like a rainbow. He used to call himself the Rainbow Family. Oh, okay. Yeah. And in that, he was trying to show that this is the way the world should be, this is the way the church should be. Mm -hmm. And in some sense of the word, that was true. The church should be uh, the mixed, rainbow, the rainbow uh -huh. if you will. Uh -huh. And from that, uh, as his sins begin to open up and people begin to see that, yeah. he be, yes. Yeah, so you, you were the bodyguard for his wife, is that correct? Right, I was uh, assigned to be her personal bodyguard uh -huh. when he got ready to send her back to do some work for him. Uh -huh out of the clear blue and it just was God, he had yeah. appointed me to go with her. Mm -hmm. But the stipulation was that if his wife, myself, had said anything negative about the leader and that cause to mm -hmm. see him personally, because we would not be leaving. Oh, okay. And as it were, you know, you had this fear, so you didn't talk about things that you had questions about. Mm -hmm. You just kind of kept them on your insides. So why didn't you die in Guyana? Two months before the tragedy, we were sent out by Jones to go back to the United States mm -hmm. with the promise, this was his words to me, that he was going to have us back there in two months because he knew I was going to miss my wife mm -hmm. and my three-year-old son, mm -hmm. uh, Hugh Ishii. And as it were, I went with her on that word from him. At the end of two months, which was early November 1978, his wife came to me up in the San Francisco temple and her words to me was that they said for her to come back and for me to stay for another month, they were going to send someone to replace me. And as you know, on November 18th, 1978 is when the tragedy, tragedy took happened. Place. And, and uh, through that, out of the 913 people, which also included my first wife and uh, my three-year-old son. Wow, devastating. And then shortly after that, you became born again. Is in 81, actually, it was, it was in 1981, yeah. because uh, right after that, I was just, I didn't know what to do with myself. I was mm -hmm. trying to find myself. I was trying to find God, but mm -hmm. I was doing it in all the wrong ways. Yeah. Was, Are you available to go to schools, uh, colleges, or churches and talk about this, pray for people? I know you've got an yes, awesome I do. responsibility. Yes, I do. I, so I, you and I, your um, family go out and minister? Yeah. yeah. Every, yeah. at least twice a year, I go to UCLA and uh, share in, in 
a lecture there. Mm -hmm. And sometimes at churches when they open their doors, I go and share also. Amen. Because people need to hear this. They need to understand how easy it is to be deceived if they don't know this word for themselves. Amen, amen, amen. Now, uh, maybe we can kind of just minister to the people, the people of deception, because when that was coming out, in maybe a minute or two where mm -hmm. you could just minister to people about deception, you know, that's, that's, that's something. You know, you think you save, you think you're doing the right thing, but all the time you're deceived. So maybe just take uh, about a minute or so to amen. just talk to the audience. Uh, all right, and, praise uh, God. Understand this, that God has appointed all of us to come into this world. That's why we're here. We're not here by accident, regardless of what your family situation may have been or been. Amen. But God wants you to understand that we're all, we all have a responsibility, and that is to love him with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And in that, we begin to know him, know him more than our loved ones, more than our companions. Yes. And in that, he begins to give us a understanding and a discernment of the good, the bad, and the ugly. What we need to understand that we need to know the Word of God for ourselves. I'm not saying do not go to church. That's not what I'm implying. I'm implying that you need to get somewhere among a body of believers, Amen. believers in Jesus Christ.